Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regimented Editor Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel, specifically the Z370 and the H110 chipsets and their support for eight core coffee lakes. So one of the lingering questions we've had for some time now, when we heard first about the uh, existence of eight core coffee lakes is, well, does that mean that if you've got a Z370 motherboard, you're going to be able to run the eight core coffee lakes on there. Now, of course, there were some rumors that hinted that there would be some uh, compatibility uh, between the two uh, types of processors, because what we saw was that there was a six core processor running on a Z390 chipset, which of course at least told us that it was going to be compatible in one way, but there was that question of whether it's going to happen the other way. But then we saw a couple of entries showing an eight core coffee lake running on a Z270 motherboard. But of course, whether that was being misidentified internally uh, on the a motherboard side, or whether that was just, you know, because it was a uh, um, an engineering sample, or whether it was something entirely different, we couldn't be 100% certain. Now we have an update concerning this, and this comes to us from ASRock. It's been discovered by folks on Reddit and other websites that the ASRock BIOS OC tweaker has entries which lend a strong argument that the H um, 110 and the Z370 motherboards will support eight core coffee lakes because there are specific entries in this application which denote the existence of motherboard support on those particular platforms. Of course, you should take that with grains of salt until Intel do officially confirm it. But one thing I can tell you which does tend to favor the fact that it will support this is, well, actually, I think there's a couple of things. The first is that public uh, perception of Intel has been kind of low at the moment, not just because of the uh, Coffee Lake processors not working on the 200 series board, but obviously you had the um, whole 28 core, 5 gigahertz issue. You've had the fact that uh, AMD, of course, have been punching Intel in the uh, uncomfortable areas because of Ryzen. It's just a bit of a PR disaster for Intel at the moment. I do think that this would be a win, although whether I'd categorize this as a win when it should just be like, well, you bought this uh, platform, uh, you've bought into this platform, so really you should be able to upgrade to at least the same darn uh, architecture. But anyway, you get where I'm going with this. But I also think that the other uh, thing that is kind of a smoking gun is the later piece of news we've heard, and that is that the Z370 and Z390 chipsets are essentially identical. There is a bit of confusion at the moment of how much difference there is between the two PCHs. Some people are saying that the Z370 is going to almost phase out and instead we're going to see the Z390 pretty much replace it, and others are saying that it's going to coexist, but the one thing that does seem to be consistent between the two sides is that the Z370 and Z390 are almost identical in terms of the feature set. The key differential between these two boards will actually be third party implementation. So that would be like as media or whatever else uh, putting, or, and that of course would be down to motherboard uh, vendors just to clarify, putting uh, third party chips on the motherboard to expand compatibility and feature sets. What are my thoughts on this? Well, honestly, I'm all for it, and I do think it would really strengthen Intel's value proposition in the market. The biggest question I have, uh, aside from the obvious one, and that's price and, com well, obvious ones, excuse me, and that's price and compatibility, would be what type of clock speeds we're going to be getting out of this particular processor. That, to me, is the question. We've seen engineering samples go from 2.6 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz. Frankly, I would still be rather happy if they hit the mid, four gigahertz mark uh, when overclocked. So let's say they hit 4.4 to 4.7 when overclocked. I would be extremely happy with that. And honestly, I would like to see then what uh, AMD would be left to do. Would they counter by reducing the cost of the 2700X and then releasing a 2800X? Would they just forget the 2800X and just cut the price of the 2700X as much as possible? It would be a fascinating uh, decision but, into, but uh, we are left with there from AMD and I do wonder of course and the lot final thing for this topic what Intel will decide to price the 8 core at and what's it actually going to be called I mean for the sake of this video I'm just going to call it 8800k 
but what would be the pricing and are they going to reduce the cost of the 8700k so the geforce 11 slash geforce 20 series has become a bit of a joke now in the tech industry it almost seems to be getting onto the level of half-life 3 hey when's half-life 3 being released hey when the GeForce 11 is being released. And even NVIDIA, I have been pretty damn tight-lipped on it. Jensen Huang, of course, at Computex, uh, just said that the cards are going to be released a long time from now. There were multiple reports that we were going to see the GPUs released late July. Uh, actually, some new reports have said that that's going to be a case, but I'm somewhat skeptical about that for one particular reason, and that is that um, there are reports, of course, of hundreds of thousands of GPU cores being returned back to NVIDIA. There was one AIB partner that wasn't named. It was named as one of the big three, but which one that is, you can guess, uh, that reportedly sent back 300,000 GPU cores back to NVIDIA. And that's just one company. Let's say that several others have done the same with much smaller shipments, let's say 20 to 50,000, it's possible we could be looking at 400 or 500,000 GPU cores with returned back to NVIDIA, and obviously the company probably would like to get rid of some of that back inventory. But there has been another report from a website, WCCF Tech, and they are telling us that according to their sources within the supply chain, and I'm actually more likely to believe these rumors, but I'll get into why in just a second, we're actually going to see a much later launch. In fact, the GPUs are not going to launch until possibly late Q4, with mainstream supply not becoming a thing until the first quarter of next year. If you've been following uh, NVIDIA on Facebook or Twitter, one of the posts they actually put out recently was celebrating the birthday of Alan Turing. Now, you can take that innocently and just think, well, he was kind of instrumental in the technology of computers, the science of computing, but you could also think, well, yeah, the quote that was placed in with the tweet, which was the quote which was on Twitter and Facebook, we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there needs to be done. So once again, according to the website WCCF Tech, we're going to be seeing the Turing architecture, and that's going to be in sometime early August that board partners will be getting the first shipments of NVIDIA's next generation graphics card parts. But it's most likely we're not going to see a launch until the third quarter of this year, but numbers are going to be extremely limited. And in fact, we could be seeing AIB partners getting just 150 to 300, I'm just going to repeat that, 150 to 300 GPUs total. And this will be essentially for development purposes, to actually understand how to put the cards together, what type of performance they're going to be getting, iron out any kinks and give feedback to NVIDIA, perhaps so that NVIDIA can tweak drivers, that type of thing. So in reality, it could be that we don't actually see, if these rumors are accurate, volume production start until at the very least, let's say October, November time, and therefore it might be January or February before these cards become readily available without price gouging becoming a factor. After all, let's say that you order online on a store, you can almost bet that if quantities are limited, you're either going to get people just poach them and then resell them at insane markups on like eBay or what have you, or the retailers themselves are just going to price gouge, or you're going to be basically begging to get one of these cards. You're, it's going to be like the original Wii launch over again, if you recall how bad that was. Do I put much stock in these rumors? Well, honestly, it's really difficult to know right now. The problem is, and this is slightly off topic, so if you're not interested in like my thoughts on this, you can click off the video, but here's my issue. NVIDIA don't have any reason to launch early. That's, that's the kicker. And as much as NVIDIA are kind of, you know, <laughs> being a little ridiculous now with the launch, like what, first of all, we don't know why they've delayed the launch. There's the rumors concerning the 300,000 GPUs, that's one. But it's also possible that they're perhaps working further on the architecture. We don't know, for example, if they've been waiting cost reduction on GDDR6 memory. We don't know what's going on with the supply chain specifically. We don't know what process is going to be on. Many rumors are telling us it's going to be on the 12NM, but there are some that are saying it could, based on the TSMC thing, it could be on 7NM. Frankly, I'd be shocked if it was on 7NM, but I've been wrong before, and it's possible I'm wrong here. I would love to be wrong, because that would be amazing, in this instance, anyway. And 
And the other issue is we don't know what technology NVIDIA are trying to cram in. It's possible, and I'm not trying to defend a company here, I'm not white knighting for them, I'm just saying that we don't know the reasons yet, but it's possible that they are trying to add in technology which is based on, um, let's say, ray tracing. They're possibly trying to make sure that the GPUs don't suffer from price gouging, and perhaps they're trying to do it from cryptocurrency issues as well. We just don't know. I, I Obviously, I don't know what's going to happen with the launch. No one really does at the moment. The only person or people that know are most likely NVIDIA themselves. I have a feeling that even board partners don't truly know because it would have leaked by now. Oh, and finally, on the subject of graphics cards, Micron have officially started to mass produce GDDR6 memory. And this, of course, will be instrumental most likely in whatever next generation architecture we're going to see from NVIDIA. And we can only assume as well the Radeon GPUs such as Navi. They're going to be starting out with 14 GBPS um, initially. And this, of course, is only going to get faster and faster and faster and faster over the coming months. Uh, and they are ready to also release 16 GB dies with up to 16 GBPS transfer rates, uh, which is well within the JDEC specifications, just so we're clear. Assuming they're using a 256-bit memory bus, that's 8 chips total, with 8 GB, that means that you're getting 80 gigabytes of total memory. So that's pretty substantial, but obviously if they use the 16 uh, gigabit die, then you're looking at instead 16 gigabytes of memory total. And obviously that would expand considerably if you decide to go with a wider memory bus, for example, 384 bits or what have you. Because don't forget the 16 GB dies will actually support up to two gigabytes of memory. So that starts to quickly mount up. Overall, it's awesome that we're seeing the introduction now of GDDR6 has been talked about for so long. Personally speaking, I'm really looking forward to the next generation of graphics cards and what we're going to be seeing with that. I really want to know if ray tracing is going to become more normal. I did actually release a video just recently uh, discussing a ray tracing running on the next generation Xbox, which apparently is being known so far as Project Scala. So I'll try to remember to link that in the video description uh, below. Ooh, sorry guys, one second. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Hong. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Hmm, yeah. No, 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 I wouldn't tell anyone this. Of course not. You can trust me. So, when are we looking for the release, then, for the cards? Yeah, I know. I've been trying to get hold of you for a while. So... Possibly March. Okay, and that... Uh, can you tell me the price? Ooh, that's quite expensive. I understand, I understand, I understand. Development costs and all. So, that would be for the, what, the 1180? Okay, I see. What about specifications? Okay, so we're looking... Okay, so it hasn't been 100% uh, nailed down yet. But you were looking at over 8,000? 8,000 CUDA cores, that sounds pretty good. I'm assuming it's not going to have HBM, no? GDDR6, of course, of course. Um, what about uh, the memory bus? So we're looking at 384, 512, okay, yeah. Oh, I see, so you're not sure whether we're going to see the, the uh, 1180 launch at the same time. I see, that's what the confusion is. Oh, okay, that makes sense, I see. No, 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 of course you can count on me. I won't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. No, 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 I was doing some filming, but the camera's off at the moment. Yeah. All right. No, thanks a lot, Mr. Huang. Uh, that was very... I appreciate that a lot. No, 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 definitely. Oh, um, will it have uh, tensor cores available for, you know, GeForce users? Hmm, okay, that sounds great, that sounds great. No, 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 I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. All right, bait. Okay, guys, um, you won't tell anyone about that stuff, right? Of course not. Anyway, with all of that said, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. And normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now.